Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to find out if you can make tooling from rebar. Um, this is a piece of rebar that was given to me uh, by uh, Bob Krushenk, uh, a great guy, great friend of mine. Um, he gave me this this steel that has was given to him and it is likened to somewhere around a 1084 to 1095. Now that's what I have been told about this. Now in a previous video I have already spark tested this and I will go ahead and show a short clip here of me spark testing that 1090 uh, this this particular rebar here and it threw a lot of really great sparks as you can see. Um, very comparable to what I would compare it to a 1084, 1095. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing the real test. The way that we're going to really test this to see if it does any good for punches and chisels is I'm going to forge this out to about like a cape chisel. Essentially a uh, metal cutting chisel that you would use to cut troughs and things like that or cut out in between two saw cut marks. Uh, on a piece of steel and we're going to do that do exactly that today after we've went through the heat treatment of this now since this is close to a 1084 1095 I'm going to assume that it is a water hardening steel so we are going to quench it in water then we are going to draw it back to a straw like color which I would do on say a coil spring steel which is like a 5160 or uh, what I would do on any 1095 or 1045 tool steels that I would be using for this particular instance. So let's get this in the forge and let's forge our cape chisel out of this and see if it will cut. Okay, so to get a decent control of what I'm doing here, I want to take and stick this piece of material in the fire and I want to bring it up to temperature very slowly. Anytime you're working with a high carbon tool steel, you need to bring the material up to temperature slowly. Otherwise, you're going to take and have cracks at a later date um, when you go to the actual hardening process. This isn't always a causation of cracks, but it is correlated. Correlation, again, does not antiquate out to causation, but it is a factor. So something to keep in mind. So we are going to bring this thing up to heat really nice and slow like, and then we'll be over at the anvil and pound it away. One thing to indicate about this uh, piece of rebar, if you will, is that it has two dots. Now I was told that these two dots on the rebar have, it, that's the significance that is indicating that this is the type of steel you want to use for punches and chisels. Again, I'm just going off of information here, third party information, so take it with a grain of salt. We're gonna give this a good test, and I'll be right back over with you at the anvil, and we'll get this forged out, and I'll give you my thoughts as I'm forging it of the way it feels under the hammer. Okay, so the material heated very, very quickly. And already I can tell you that this material is quite tough. This stuff is hammering quite hard. I think this is gonna be excellent stuff. Again, trying not to come at it with any preconceived bias. This is the first time I am ever working this stuff, so, you know, bear with me. I've never worked this stuff before, so you're experiencing it for the first time like I am. So far we've got a nice little square taper on there. We need to keep going in order to turn this into a cape chisel. I'm gonna make it a little thinner yet. Um, so let's take another heat on that.
let me know in the comment section if you have any interest in me doing a video on how to forge cake chisels. As that's not the subject line of this video. The video here is just to show me making if we can get this thing hard and a usable tool. So that's what this video is about. But let me know in the comment section if you'd like to take and see a whole video series on that making a cake chisel. Okay, we're going to forge in our secondary bevel of our cake chisel. Start that close here. Get that forged down. Leave it fairly thick at the end is what we'll be doing. And then we'll be putting in our, our primary bevel here uh, by grinding that in. But forging the secondary bevel in really saves material. So we're going to do that first. So there we go. We got our secondary bevel in. Now some of Kate chisels are actually curved. This one I'm just going to leave straight. I'm going to leave it straight up. No need in putting a ton of time into this. I just want to see if this is going to work. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start with that. So far it's pretty tough stuff. So I'll go ahead and cut this off and we'll go over to the grinder and we'll go ahead and grind this now. So just like in other videos of hardening and tempering chisels, um, I'm going to take and do this in a one-step process, basically. Um, I do this quite often. Sometimes I use oil. It all depends on the material. But for this particular instance, I don't know what I'm working with. I'm just going to go ahead and try it the way that uh, I would do this, what I would call a quick hardening and tempering way of doing things. We're going to start with the struck end in the fire. I'm going to heat it up nice and hot, bring that end up to critical, then I will flip around and put the cutting edge into the fire and bring it up to critical or non-magnetic temperature. Now, in other videos, like I've explained, if you look in that if you were paying attention to when I was grinding it, I ground a little flat across the edge so it's not a sharp cutting edge. The reason for this being is I need more surface area of material there when it engages the water so this way I don't get cracking or crackage. Now worst case scenario this thing hardens up too hard and gets really brittle and ends up cracking in water and if it does that then I'll go into oil and we would do it in oil instead. But the point of this is can you harden rebar or can you make tools from rebar? So far, the way I feel about it is yes, you can if it's the right kind of rebar. But we'll see how it works once we actually get to cutting steel with it and uh, it ought to be interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll skip all the quenching and stuff. I'm gonna draw it back to straw uh, just so we can get on with the video. If you have interest in watching videos of hardening and tempering, I've got a slew of them on the channel. Uh, you can look at the chasing tool series that I have done. Um, and hardening and tempering a chisel and that should answer all your questions there. Just go to the playlist section on the channel. So I'm going to skip that step and we're going to go right on to seeing if this bad boy can cut some steel. Okay, so here we go. We've got our bevel ground on it. Um, once again, I took this to a straw color and now we're going to see if we can't shear this piece off and how well it actually ends up holding up to this abuse. So far, it is cutting pretty good, as a sharp tool should. Nice and clean shear line so far. Come right across. 
being shorn. It's about there. And there we have it. So we cut that clean off there. Now, if this was a piece of mild steel or some sort of questionable quality steel, this sharp of an edge would have been gone. This thing is 100% perfect and perfect shape. I'll take you over to the workbench and zoom you up real close so you can see it. Uh, I have not retouched this up. I'm not going to retouch this up, but I could take and come in here and cut this all day. Uh, cut even more material out here all day long. And it's a, like I said, it's a pretty amazing thing, really, that you can do this. And just cut this piece. Nothing at all on this thing. Perfectly in good shape. Just cut right down through this piece. Like as if it was butter. No edge deformation whatsoever. Um, this is eighth inch plate, by the way, that I'm working on. This is a mild steel plate, or like a 1018 plate. And this thing's just shredding it. Uh, no edge damage whatsoever. The thing's still razor sharp. Uh, so let's go over real quick to the bench, and I'll show you the edge. Again, I'm not touching this up, so let's go to the bench. So there you have it folks, um, yeah perfectly as you can see the edge suffered no damage, no wear and tear whatsoever. Let me try to zoom you in a little closer, there we go. No edge damage whatsoever, um, my assumption's right uh, or the guy's assumption was right of this being like a 1084 or 1095 type steel. I think he said 1084 was what it was closely resembled to, so I'm going to assume that it is pretty much a 1084 tool steel uh, that you can make. It's a high carbon steel that you can make cuts, but you know I've sheared off that little bit there and chopped into this. There was no edge damage whatsoever, um, you know, just as sharp as when it came off. So there you go. You've got your questions answered, hopefully. Uh, yes, you can make tooling out of rebar or found quality steels. Uh, basically, the only stipulation I can see is that you need to take and find the proper rebar uh, that actually has, uh, that's for high tensile applications, and I think it'll be okay. Again, check the nomenclature with it. Uh, don't buy a ton of it until you've checked out a little small sampling of it and see if it's actually going to work out. Uh, you may want to make four or five tools up from different sections of it uh, because rebar has been known predominantly in the past not to be a very good quality steel. Um, but then again, it may have gotten a lot better considering we are in modern times now and it is used in almost every single concrete pour. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Were you impressed with the results or are the results just really not that, uh, not that interesting to you? Just let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I look forward to hearing from you. And as always, God bless you. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.